Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Greg Michalowski from ForexLive.com. I'm going to talk to you today as we end our week and begin another week about the euro versus U.S. dollar, what we went, did, went, uh, did this week and what we look forward to in next week's trading. So let's get started. The first thing I want to point out is this week was a big dud. We only had a 117 pip trading range from the low to the high in the euro versus US dollar. That represents the lowest trading range since December 21st, 2014. That's over two years ago that we haven't had that most that narrow of trading range. When the market non-trends, I look for the market to trend eventually to break out, to break out of the range. So although we had a pretty dud of a week this week, we can look forward to something better next week. And we have some data to help us along. Uh, we have the FOMC decision uh, midweek, and then when at the end of the week, we're going to have the U.S. employment report. So those two things are going to help the market gain some momentum, I hope, uh, and push us out of what is this um, narrow trading range that's centered around some key technical levels that I'll outline right now. But let's take a look at the daily chart here. And uh, the uh, 1.0706 level is becoming almost a cliche, hasn't it? Uh, that represents the 38.2% retracement of the move down from the November high to the early January low. I've been talking about it all week, if not for the last two weeks. If we get above it, that's gonna be more bullish. If we stay below it, that's gonna be more bearish. That's gonna be the dividing line, the line in the sand between bullish and bearish. And in trading this week, we traded above it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and on Thursday and Friday, we traded both above it and below it. So the market still hasn't uh, figured out its way, which way it wants to go. Does it want to go higher above that 38.2 or does it want to go lower below that 38.2? We are closing or looking like we might uh, settle below that level, currently trading around the 106.90 level. So let's uh, assume that we have a little bit more of a bearish bias here for the euro versus U.S. dollar. But in next week's trading, we're going to continue to keep that level as a line in the sand, the line that's going to define that bullish and bearish uh, bias for this uh, currency pair. Another thing happened of interest in trading here today, and I'm going to show you off the hourly chart. And if we take a look at the hourly chart, and I want you to focus here at the high price. This was after the GDP, the number... Uh, number was weaker. Uh, we saw the euro eventually uh, try to move above that 1.0706 level. That's this line right here, um, and and uh, and extend higher. But we ran into this blue line, and this blue line represents the what 100-hour moving average. And the 100-hour moving average was an area where on Wednesday we came near it here, near it here, and we found early buyers. So the market was trying to stay above that moving average, stay above the 1.0706 level as well and uh, then on Thursday what do we do we broke below it and on this test right here what do we do we leaned against we had traders leaning against that hundred hour moving average risk can be defined risk be limited and um, it ultimately led to the uh, move and the flush out to the downside that we saw in yesterday's trading in trading today uh, when we went back up to that 100-hour moving average, what did we do? We found those sellers again. So they're still leaning against that 100-hour moving average. That makes it as important or just as important um, as the 1.0706 level. With the 200-hour moving average moving up toward that 1.0706 level, I'm going to be looking at this area here between the 200-hour moving average and the 100-hour moving average as my thicker line in the sand for trading next week. Move above it, and that's gonna be more bullish. First get above the 200, then get above the 38.2, then get above the 100 um, bar moving average, or hour moving average, and all that is going to lead to a bullish move to the upside, or a breakout to the upside, and hopefully momentum in that direction. Stay below it, and guess what? The bears are remaining in control. So right now we are below those two, those two moving averages. We're below this yellow area, and so we should expect to see lower prices, or that's the bias from a technical perspective. Now, on the downside, where can we go? And if you take a look at this hourly chart, the 38.2% retracement, I'll, I'll uh, zoom out here, is of this move up from this swing low uh, around January 11th to the high price that we saw in trading this week. 38.2 comes in at 1.0651. We were looking for that on Thursday, couldn't quite get to it. 
And uh, in trading here today, we also uh, found support against that level. Couldn't get above, uh, below that level. So that's going to be our first target. And also, this blue line. This blue line represents the 100 bar moving average on the four hour chart. And that level comes in at 1.0645 level. Move below the 38.2, move below the 100 bar moving average on the four hour chart. And we have the potential, or, or that turns the bias more, more bearish to the downside for this uh, currency pair. Along, along the way, further to the downside becomes a 50% retracement. And then we get toward the green line right here, which represents the 200 bar moving average on the four hour chart. It looks like it's miles away from the current level, but if we were to just map that out from here to here, that only represents about 128 pips. Remember, we just went through a week that had 117 pips. That was the most narrow trading week in, in two plus years. So to get down to that green line on some sort of bearish move is not that far. It's not that not, not that big a deal to get there. So that would be a target that we we as traders have to pay attention to, listen to, to expect that um, we get to that that level as long as the um, the levels um, are taken out one by one and remain taken out. That is, take out the hundred, maybe take out the fifty percent. And then move down toward a 61.8 percent toward our 200 bar moving average on the four hour chart that's what we look for and we can even get below that level and start to rotate even further to the downside it depends on the momentum it depends upon the news it depends on all those things but that's what we see from a technical perspective on the top side uh, we talked about get above the 100 hour moving average and things are going to be more bullish on the top side we have 1.0775 level that is our highs for the week um, that corresponded uh, with this uh, low swing low going back to uh, January of 2016. Swing low right here, the market moved higher, came back down here to a um, higher low through here. And that's another key level around the 108.19 level. Um, in addition to that 108.19 swing low right here, right here, um, we also have the 50% retracement that moved down from the November high to the low. And the 100-day uh, moving average, that's a blue line in this chart, that 100-day moving average at 50% retracement at 1.0819 level is a is an, another key level that if we get above, we should see the market turn its bias to the upside. It was um, this November uh, day, this is election day, where the market last traded um, with any sort of movement above that 100-day moving average, and it was only uh, short-lived. So get back above that 100-day moving average, uh, even though it's at a lower price right here, would be more bullish for traders. So those are the key levels uh, for our trading as we head um, into the new trading week. And uh, what we're going to be looking for is those breaks and looking for those movements uh, through um, our technical targets in, in either direction. Keep yourself ambidextrous. Um, don't necessarily overthink it. Just follow the price action, use your tools to guide you, and you'll do okay in your trading. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Wishing you all good fortune in your trading. We'll see you all next week. Bye-bye now.